Shore. This is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. And if you haven't yet done so, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a Better for America episode. Today, I am delighted to have with us a real voice of truth and courage and one we heard from at CPAC a few months ago. Today, he is at the heart of telling it like it is, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment, federal overreach and gun control. And for AMACers listening, we know how important our Second Amendment rights are. Representing Florida's 17th District, Congressman Greg Stubbe has received much acclaim amongst AMACers. In fact, there are over 178,000 AMAC members in the great state of Florida and 11,500 plus members in his district alone. So we are honored to have Congressman Greg Stubbe with us today because as a Republican member of Congress, he speaks with courage, conviction, and impact. Apart from his time spent in the Florida Senate and House, he is also a lawyer and has served in the U.S. Army with distinction. As an airborne infantry officer and as a JAG officer, which means he wore two hats as an attorney and an officer, Congressman Stubbe's time included service in Iraq, and to cap his expertise, he has committee assignments on foreign affairs and judiciary, but most importantly, I think he tirelessly strives to get the truth on the record. And he did that at the June 2nd House hearing where Democrats pushed their broad gun control bill, but regardless of the ruling, he has remained a vigorous defender of our right to keep and bear arms. It is a pleasure to welcome you, Congressman Greg Stubbe. We're so thrilled to have you with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to see you. Well, thank you. And it's really wonderful to have you back. But right now, it seems that our constitutional rights, including the right to keep and bear arms, is really under intense attack. And you have made some very compelling arguments about why we should have the right to firearms. And you did that at the recent House hearing when you virtually demonstrated your guns, only to be told by the chairman to put them away. And later, when this video went viral, you made a statement saying, and I quote, everything you need to know about this gun control package Democrats don't even want to let me show what they're trying to ban. You said, I'm an American in my own home, and I'll do what I want with my guns. And that was the end quote. Mr. Chairman, I do want to share a quick clip of that right here, because we applaud your courage to stand up. Right here in front of me, I have a Sig Sauer P226. Comes with a 21-round magazine. This gun would be banned. Here's a 12-round here's a magazine. This magazine would be banned under this current bill, it doesn't fit because this gun was made for a 20 round, 21 round magazine. This gun would be banned under this bill. Here's a Sig Sauer 320. It takes a 20 round magazine, takes a 20 round magazine. Here's a 12 round magazine that would be banned. It doesn't fit because it would be banned. This gun would be banned under this bill. Here's a gun I carry every single day to protect myself, my family, my wife, my home. This is a XL Sig Sauer P365. Comes with a 15 round magazine. Here's a seven round magazine, which would be less than what would be lawful under this bill if this bill were to come off. It doesn't fit. So this gun would be banned. I hope the, the gun Democrat is not bill. loaded. I'm at my house. I can do whatever I want with my guns. Congressman, can you refresh many of our two and a half million AMAC members why this is so important? They care deeply about our Second Amendment right. And what does it say about the socialist left who would rather silence us, silence you, rather than let you explain? Yeah, I think it was important for the American people to understand when they talk about high capacity magazines and they say you can't have more than a 10 round magazine, uh, demonstrating what that means to the American people and that that would forbid 90% the majority of American semi-automatic handguns. The magazine ban wasn't just as it relates to rifles or as the left likes to call them assault rifles. It was any magazines over 10 rounds. Well, most, most handguns, most semi-automatic handguns take more than 10 round magazine. So you'd be virtually eliminating and banning those type of handguns that are used every single day to protect Americans from on their property and their vehicles and their homes and their families. And I think it was important to demonstrate that so people understood what they were actually accomplishing by this magazine ban they were trying to put in place. Yeah, and that's very important that you, you can demonstrate that and explain to 
average people like me who may not understand those nuances, and they're very important to understand because we can't just, the Second Amendment is so important. And I think that we often imagine that our core rights that are in the Bill of Rights, that they could never be taken from us. But we are at a time when Democrats are really, they're doing some crazy things. They're defunding police. There's a surge in riots and protests. Many Americans have become really concerned. And, and we're seeing a record number of minorities buying guns, women buying guns. They're buying them legally. They're buying them for self-defense. And yet we still see Democrats in Congress and the White House really questioning whether we have a right to own sidearms and long arms. Why is banning semi automatic weapons and the banning of like a nine millimeter pistol, for example, or disallowing ammunition uh, of various kinds, so un unconstitutional and dangerous really to the public? Well, uh, it's very clear in the second amendment of our constitution that we shall have the right to keep and bear arms uh, that didn't define what arms are. It's arms, plural. And uh, I think it's important that the American people have the ability to defend themselves. Uh, regardless of what type of firearm they choose to use. To restricting law-abiding citizens' access to certain firearms is not going to prevent criminals from obtaining weapons, not going to prevent somebody who wants to commit harm or murder individuals. What we need to be focused on is ensuring that in gun-free zones, uh, not creating gun-free zones, and where we have situations like schools, ensuring that we have individuals there that are properly trained to be able to react appropriately uh, if, God forbid, somebody does come in with a firearm. And what we've created with these gun-free zones is a target for uh, maniacs who want to kill as many people as possible before law enforcement arrives. Mm, yeah, it does. It seems that this is really part I hate to say it, you know, we want a unified nation, but it seems that there's this Democrat master plan to gradually take guns from the people or even to have the Second Amendment repealed altogether. And it seems very troubling. Uh, you've been very direct, and I think that's exactly what we need more of. So we appreciate that. Uh, Congressman, as guns are of, of no use without ammunition, it seems that this push for uh, ammunition ban is really part of uh, the left's plot to disarm Americans, as I said. And then there are governors like Newsom from California banning the possession of large capacity ammunition magazines. And as a result, we're seeing gun and ammunition sales. They're surging within the past few months. Is there anything that we can do on a smaller government level to prevent this complete a uh, tyrannic, I call it, push from the left. In other words, how do we prevent more states from becoming like California? Well, I think states like Florida standing up and states like Texas standing up and, and, and having states do constitutional carry, which should be what we all have because we have that right under the Second Amendment of the Constitution. And more states standing up for our state's rights, I think is very important under the Second Amendment of our Constitution. Um, the federal government and Democrats don't even shy away from now saying that they want to ban your guns. They openly say it now. Uh, they call them assault rifles, but what they really are are just any semi-automatic rifle that takes a magazine, which is the majority of rifles that are out there on the market today and the most popular rifles that are out there on the market today and the type of rifles that people want to be able to protect themselves and their families. Democrats are very open about taking those rights away, taking those guns away, um, even, even the president himself has talked about a full-on assault weapon ban, which would be about 240 different semi-automatic firearms. Anything that's magazine fed would be incorporated in that uh, assault weapon ban. So the majority of rifles in this country uh, would be banned if the Democrats got their way. Hmm. You know, our republic, our listeners know that our republic was founded on the idea that the Bill of Rights really matters and that our whole constitutional process depends on these rights. Uh, they need to be unchanging. Uh, is the public at risk if we lose the Second Amendment in your view? And then finally, is this, is this do you think that this issue is really going to play a role in November of this year in this election cycle? Well, I absolutely think it's going to be an issue that plays a role in the elections, but Democrats thinks it goes in favor of them when in fact it doesn't. The majority of Americans support law-abiding citizens' ability to defend themselves. Uh, if you look at statistics and you look at numbers, just look at the municipalities and the jurisdictions that have put in place 
magazine bans and assault weapon bans and all of these different laws. They have a higher crime rate and a higher rate of use of firearms than states like Florida where those laws don't exist. Because when you strict the rights of law-abiding citizens to defend themselves, the criminals aren't going to pay attention to that and they're going to continue to commit crime. Uh, it's only allowing the freedom of people to be able to defend themselves uh, when you see the crime rates go down because criminals aren't going to go to individuals uh, in locations where they know people are properly trained in, in carrying firearms. It's exactly what the Democrats want to do. And I think the midterms, uh, on top of a whole host of other issues that we're facing in our country that the Democrats have created. But I think the majority of Americans know that um, we should be able to protect ourselves. We have a second amendment to the constitution and aren't buying into the rhetoric of the left that we just need to take away everybody's guns and suddenly crime rates are gonna go down. That's right. You know, <clears throat> I remember as a young girl, my father telling me stories that, you know, when he was in fourth and fifth grade, uh, there were school lessons on how to hold a gun, uh, how to use a gun properly. Um, this was something that you'd see ads in kids' magazines and this sort of thing. And um, throughout my father's life, he had tremendous respect and understood that this is a dangerous piece of equipment. We've got to know, uh, obviously, how to use it properly. I think education and uh, explaining to people proper use is what we need to do more of. Uh, that's what law-abiding citizens want and doing more to uh, prevent guns getting into the wrong hands. And I do think that um, a lot of what the Democrats are doing is not going to result in what's good for the American people. Uh, it's, it's essentially hurting law-abiding citizens and uh, does really nothing to reduce crime in America. And, you know, I have a final question for you, sir. You said, Congressman, that you know we're talking here a lot about gun gun control and second amendment rights and so forth but in the great state of florida there must be a, a plethora of issues that are very important to those in your district we see wide open borders we see critical race theory and the indoctrination of our children in schools we see threats against our second amendment rights we see a potential roe v wade re reversal and the way that the left is behaving uh really trying to delegitimize the Supreme Court. Uh, crime is rising like crazy. Uh, we see more and more young people dying from fentanyl uh, overdose, uh, overdoses, um, spending, inflation, the price of gasoline, hurting our seniors, hurting average Americans. Of all of those issues, what do you think are maybe the top one or two issues that are really going to drive people to the polls in November and perhaps in 2024, uh, what do you see American people mostly concerned about? Well, with the economy in the state that it is, the type of issues that affect every American every single day is gonna be gas prices, which we are seeing that in a direct result of the things that the Biden administration has put in place in trying to shut down the domestic production of oil. You're seeing inflation affect everyday Americans every single day, which is a direct result of the Democrats dumping trillions upon trillions of dollars on our economy and all the other policies that we've had in place. And you just did a, an excellent job of laying out crisis after crisis that the, the Democrats in control of the House, the Senate, and the White House, and they can try to cast blame to Putin and cast blame to Trump and all of these other people. The American people are smarter than that. They know that they have control of the House, the Senate, and the White House, and the cost of their food has skyrocketed. The cost of their diesel and their fuel has skyrocketed. Uh, all of these things that are affecting everyday life for them as they drive to their, their jobs every single day, uh, on top of the border, on top of crime, on top of the leading cause of death right now in our country between those age of 18 and 45 is fentanyl overdoses and all of that comes in from the southern border. So I think the American people know enough and are smart enough to figure out that the policies the Democrats have put in place and are shepherding across our nation are not causing, uh, is causing chaos in their every single day lives. And that's going to, that's going to bleed true uh, in the midterm elections in November. It certainly will. I think the same. Well, we want to thank you for really being a great patriot and for defending our second amendment rights amongst so much else that you've done, defending our great nation we really, really appreciate you, Congressman. I want to thank you for joining us here today, as always, for your insights. But also, I think you you really demonstrate such personal courage and service and defense of our fundamental rights. I do want to ask you real quickly, because we're hearing a little bit about this tax holiday on gasoline. Bad, bad idea, in your view. 
correct? Well, it's certainly, they're trying to get gas prices down in any way they can without upsetting the progressive left flank of their party that wants to completely shut down the domestic production of oil. Hey, I'll always support tax decreases. If the federal government wants to cut taxes, I'll vote for, for tax cuts all day long. But this is clearly just a gimmick to try to lower the price of fuel, which is only going to lower it by like 30 cents, he, uh, the president said, for three months. Obviously, is not going to have an overall impact on the cost of skyrocketing fuel costs to the American people because they are, they, and Joe Biden even said in the, in the elections, he wants to shut down domestic production of oil and gas. They care more about counting carbon than they do the American people. And the fact that we don't have electric vehicles that are in semi trucks that can transport all of our products, which is having an overlaying effect on our inflation that we're seeing every day because 90% of the goods that we get at the supermarket come on diesel semi trucks. So it's, it's trying to avoid the real cause of this problem is the policies from this White House wanting to shut down domestic production of oil and gas. We were energy independent under President Trump. We need to go back to those policies and you would see those gas prices go down. Congressman, thank you. Thank you for being a fighter. And again, thank you for your service and for defending our fundamental rights. It really has been an honor to have you with us. And we hope to have you back again with us soon. Anytime. Great to see you. Thank you, sir. And I also want to thank all you AMAC members out there. Thanks for tuning in. And if you haven't downloaded the AMAC News app, do that now because you are not really informed about American politics unless you visit AMAC. You can go ahead and watch this show. You'll get great news, original content, and breaking news on the AMAC News app. So go ahead and like, follow, and share wherever you are on social media. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your podcast, Better for America. Have a great day, everyone, and God bless you. You're listening to the Better for America podcast, presented by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. To learn more about AMAC and all it has to offer, Visit us at www.amac.us.